Good afternoon. Uh, it, it's been two weeks, so hopefully I remember how to get these meetings started. Uh, first of all, uh, recognize a quorum. I am calling this meeting of the Cannabis Control Commission to order at 1.05 p.m. on July 26th, 2018. Um, can everybody in the back hear me? Great. Um, can I ask, is this meeting being recorded? Thank you. Uh, let me put the public on notice this meeting is being recorded. Can I ask uh, everybody to uh, please put their cell phones on silent uh, or shut them off altogether? Thank you. Uh, since it has uh, been two weeks since our last meeting, we have actually uh, a pretty packed agenda, so I'm going to keep my comments brief and uh, just describe what we're going to cover today in the agenda. Um, we have uh, one set of meeting uh, minutes uh, to review and approve. Uh, we have the uh, uh, standard executive director report. Uh, we have one new employee, if I'm correct, uh, to introduce, uh, and then we'll um, have our standard slides to update the status of uh, license applications. Uh, we have, before we get into the review of staff recommendations on licenses, we have several uh, commission discussions, uh, some of which we'll vote on, some of which we'll um, just discuss. Uh, but we, uh, as we have uh, mentioned in the past, um, have with the leadership of Commissioner McBride been developing guidance with respect to most community agreements. Uh, there has been some confusion on both sides in terms of guidelines there, and so uh, we have developed some guidance that Commissioner McBride, as I said, has taken leadership on. We'll discuss that. Um, we, in reviewing and discussing previous license applications, have uh, given some pushback to some of the applicants about the specificity of their positive impact plan, um, and we um, agreed that we would give guidance on that, and with the uh, leadership of Commissioner Title, uh, we do have a document to review about uh, um, guidance for positive impact plans. We also have, again, with the leadership of Commissioner Title, um, some guidance with respect to municipalities and, uh, and uh, equity issues, and so uh, we'll talk about that. Um, Commissioner Doyle has provided leadership on, um, on our agricultural uh, issues, including um, that we have a mandated report to the legislature on farmers and businesses of all sizes, and so uh, we're going to review that. Um, we also, at the request of Commissioner Title, if you recall, in a previous meeting, um, there was a request by Commissioner Title to put the issue of uh, economic empowerment applications on the uh, table. Uh, we have a survey uh, to the 300 plus people that applied for priority certification, um, economic empowerment priority certification, uh, that we sent out on Friday. Um, we have 60 plus responses uh, from that survey. Um, I was trained as a statistician, so it is my responsibility to say that we still need some more data before we can draw definitive conclusions, but we thought we'd at least share some high-level data from that as part of our conversation about economic empowerment applications, and a subsequent meeting, hopefully we'll get a greater number of responses and we'll have much more refined statistical analysis that we can perform on, on the issue, but it's an important issue that we wanted to get on the table and we'll share at a high level the data that we've gotten back thus uh, far. And uh, we have talked before, the final uh, discussion item for the commission is we've talked before about suitability committee, um, um, that the suitability review committee that would be required in those instances where our background checks uh, came back with issues uh, that uh, were uh, that required discussion and, uh, and uh, recommendation. And uh, the, the uh, executive director is going to make a recommendation, uh, a request, excuse me, that we delegate the responsibility for organizing that committee to and we'll discuss and vote on that. Um, that's it for uh, the topics, although there's seven topics there, so, or six, excuse me, um, um, and each of them can take quite a while, so this might be a lengthy meeting. Uh, once we're through that, uh, we have seven uh, completed license applications that the uh, staff has done their analysis on and review on that we've gotten. Uh, uh, background check information um, completed and uh, we have heard back from the relevant community um, that their uh, requirements have been met and so the staff will make a recommendation on each of these seven uh, license applications. Um, that's it. Uh, it's going to be a pretty packed meeting so I said I'll keep my remarks short and, uh, and let's just get into uh, the topics and uh, the first order of business being approval of minutes from uh, previous meeting July 12th, 2018. Uh, can I ask if uh, every round commission has had a chance to review these minutes? Are there any comments or ed suggested edits? And can I have a motion to approve the minutes from July 12th? So moved. Second. Uh, let the record show Commissioner Flanagan made the motion to approve, seconded by Commissioner Doyle. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
thank you. Uh, these uh, minutes have been approved, and thanks to uh, the team that uh, has uh, pulled together. That is the last meeting that we had, so I think we are completely caught up with respect to minutes. Thank you. Uh, before we get into the uh, license summary, uh, Mr. Executive Director, uh, can you give search your staff and report, please? Sure, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, there's a few staffing updates I'd like to share with the Commission first. Uh, it's the introduction of a new team member, uh, that is Polly Wynn. Polly joins us as Associate General Counsel on uh, General Counsel Christine Bailey's team. She comes to us most recently from the State Ethics Commission, where she uh, was a senior associate assistant general counsel and her time served as the active general counsel. Uh, has previously worked at the Division of Professional Licensure uh, in the Office of Legal Counsel as a contract attorney. She's a graduate of BC Law and Harvard University and again joins the commission as our new associate general counsel. We're very excited to have her. Uh, already she's hit the ground running in the, the week or so that she's been here. So I, I guess we're all out of practice, including yourself, but uh, what's the uh, lawyer versus non-lawyer count now? Uh, we continue to sufficiently uh, dominate the ranks. <laughs> also related to uh, staffing is another attorney joining the team. Uh, this is the position of enforcement counsel is open and posted on the commission's uh, mass careers page as well as on our website. That is open through July 30th. And yet again, um, that would be an attorney joining our ranks. Great. Anything else on the staffing front? Uh, we are actively interviewing for a number of positions. And uh, as you know, we have previously posted uh, our investigator position, we uh, had many hundreds of applications for that role, and we are beginning uh, the interview process for that as well as for HR generalists. So uh, many employment-related uh, items in the works and in various stages, but uh, confident that the next few meetings will have uh, periodic updates on new hires as well as uh, where we stand in the interview process. Great, thank you. Anything else on staff and front, or should we move into the uh, license and statistics? We can move into the statistics. So um, this is the broader um, kind of totals uh, capture of information from our licensing system, which is uh, there are 2,089 applications in total. Those break down into 177 pending with at least one part of an application, one packet having been submitted, 107 have been withdrawn, 1,800 are incomplete, and of course the commission has to date issued five provisional licenses. Uh, those break down into the table that you see there, which is uh, two craft cooperative, Three independent testing lab, one laboratory agent, 42 cultivation, 36 establishment agents, nine micro business, 26 product manufacturer, three research facility, 49 retail, two transportation with an existing establishment license, uh, and finally four uh, third party transportation. That's the grand total of 177. Thank you. That item, that uh, those 177 break down to um, the next slide would be 85 total pending applications with all four packets having been submitted. Uh, those break down into the following, which is one independent testing lab, uh, 30 cultivation, three micro business, 20 product manufacturer, three research facility, 26 retail, and two transportation with an existing um, establishment license. And as you see on the right hand side, uh, the plus is the differentiation from the previous meeting. So uh, that, is, that includes one additional independent testing lab, um, five uh, cultivation. That's so again total of eight, twelve new applications from or four uh, packets have been submitted uh, since the last meeting. That's fifty-seven R&D priorities, uh, three empowerment, and twenty-five general applicants. Those eighty-five application or the applications represent forty-five separate entities. Thank you. So this slide was new as of our last meeting, and this is a continuation of that, which is. Of those 85, where are they in our process? Um, there are 35 that have been submitted and are awaiting staff review for first completeness. That includes, of course, those 12 applications that uh, within the past two weeks have been, um, all four packets having been submitted. There are 18 that have been identified as having um, submitted insufficient information for us to review and therefore incomplete. Uh, there are 20 that are out for a third party. That includes the municipal notice to the city or town in which the uh, entity intends to be located as well as a, a third party background check. Uh, there are seven that are uh, before you today for consideration that are, of course, waiting for your um, uh, evaluation, and then, of course, the five that have been previously uh, before the commission for a provisional license. And lastly, is where those applications um, 
sit across Massachusetts uh, based on a county breakdown. Uh, I think just for uh, commission's uh, edification here, there are three additional applications from Berkshire County, six from Worcester County, and three from Plymouth County that make up the, uh, the 12 that are met as a last map. Correct. Any questions to the commission? Thank you. The update. That is all that I have. That's all you have for your report. Okay, so let's uh, let's move into the uh, discussion topics uh, in front of the uh, uh, commission, and, and we'll start. Uh, if it's okay with uh, uh, post community agreement guidance. So, Commissioner McBride. Again, uh, my thanks to Commissioner McBride for her leadership uh, in developing this for consideration by the commission. Two, it's reasonably 
related to the costs imposed upon the municipality by the operation of the marijuana establishment. Three, it's capped at 3% of gross annual sales, which of course means that it can be less than 3%. And four, that it is strictly time limited to a term of no more than five years, which of course means that it can also be in place for fewer than five years. The guidance addresses each of these in turn. So what does it mean to be reasonably related? So the guidance that we are going to issue, if agreed upon by the commission, states that the commission can use fees that are reasonably related as those that compensate the municipality for its actual and anticipated expenses resulting from the operation of the marijuana establishment. Case law tells us that costs associated with planning are okay. However, it is important that municipalities identify the plan specifics to justify the fee. There needs to be a reasonable relation. The fee cannot merely be a fee without designation of its origins or justification of its amount. Finally, the fee charge needs to be proportional to the cost or impact claimed by the community. And again, decisional law tells us that. Two, the cap of 3% on the community impact fee is a strict limit. Any fee that is more than 3% is not a community impact fee. If there is an additional agreement and there is an additional payment, it would be wise for those payments to comply with the legal requirements for fees that are set forth in case law and spelled out previously. And three, finally, the community impact fee is limited to five years. It can be less than five years, but by statute, it can't be more. Now this, of course, means that if you look at it and perhaps are, there is a negotiation that is ongoing where it may be difficult to discern what the specific costs are um, that need to be justified, perhaps it may make sense for the parties negotiating on that fee to consider a fee that's shorter than five years. And under the statute, the information justifying those fees is public record and also in accordance with our regulations upon renewal, um, there is a request that the costs associated with the post community agreement be submitted uh, by the marijuana establishment as part of the renewal. So there may be an opportunity there for there to be a further discussion and talk about the community impact fee and what parts of the community impact fee may remain intact and what might want to be renegotiated. So that is the overview of the host community guidance uh, that was drafted that I put before the commission for consideration today. Um, I'm happy to take any questions and, and would welcome a discussion about the content of the host community agreement, which goes into greater detail in the training. First of all, thank you again, uh, Commissioner McBride, for your leadership on this important issue. Um, I would like to have a, a discussion on this to the extent that there are comments or questions uh, from the other commissioners. And we can uh, talk about uh, uh, Commissioner McBride's suggestion to uh, postpone voting on this for two weeks, uh, pending uh, input and comments from others. Any comments uh, from the commissioner questions? Commissioner McBride? Yeah, Commissioner Doyle, I'm not surprised to see you raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually not a comment uh, to Commissioner McBride, except again to express my thanks and admiration that you tackled this subject and did it so well. Um, it, it is actually more an encouragement for folks on all sides of this issue to take the time that you are given to comment, and particularly the lawyers listening in the room, I really want to hear, uh, because we hear a lot anecdotally, but I want to actually see an argument, legal argument, including statutory construction on both sides of this issue, rather than you know just hearing about it and hearing complaints about it, I would like to see both sides of this issue break down in essentially legal briefs, Supreme Judicial Court worthy legal briefs. Our general counsel just came for the Supreme Judicial Court. So we've got a high standard to meet here. But I think it is important that we get this out and get it resolved as soon as possible. So I really appreciate uh, Commissioner McBride taking that first step and I invite everybody to participate in this process. Okay. That's it. Other comments or questions? I fully support um, everything in this guidance, and I want to thank you, Commissioner McBride, for your hard work on it. I hope 
that municipalities will find it helpful. I think that even though there's two local guidance documents being discussed today, and the other one is specifically marked equity, this one also specifically goes to the heart of equity. Because before our commission can even look at any application, it has to have local approval. And every applicant must have a host community agreement in place. And so, therefore, the ability of small businesses, local businesses, women, veteran, farmer-owned businesses, econ empowerment, equity applicants, the ability for all of them to fairly negotiate a community host agreement that reflects the municipality's actual expenses or reasonably related expenses as laid out in the law is the critical factor, maybe even the most critical factor to creating a just and inclusive industry. And so if municipalities don't follow that law, they're creating an obstacle to the commission's mission statement, which is to safely, equitably, and effectively implement the law. And we already know that barriers to entry when they're too high at the local level, we end up with a market that is very slow to start up and that has a striking lack of diversity. And so the legislature wisely looked at that concern and balanced it against the concern that we don't want municipalities to bear any kind of costs or burden from these businesses. We want the communities that welcome these facilities to benefit from the tax revenue, to have their costs covered, to be able to accept voluntary donations, but keeping in mind that the ability of small entrepreneurs to access this market is also a priority, they put a strict cap on those fees. That strict cap is 3%. Period. So I hope that this guidance is helpful for those who have questions about that. Lastly, I just wanted to flag one part of the guidance, um, and it's not an edit, it's just a flag, on um, section one under community impact fee, what are examples of required conditions? Um, there's a list, I'm sorry, what is permissible as part yes. of the community impact fee? There's a list of some anticipated costs that may reasonably be included. And so um, the first fee, traffic intersection design studies where additional heavy tra traffic is anticipated, environmental impact studies anticipated as a result of cultivation, and public safety personnel overtime costs during time where higher congestion or crowds are anticipated, I see as actual costs that are expected um, due to the presence of the establishment. The fourth one, additional substance abuse prevention programming during the first years of operation is what I would see as a voluntary donation. And that um, term voluntary donation has come up a lot. I think this is a very good example where a business might say, um, in addition to the costs that our business will bring to a municipality, we also want to contribute to substance abuse prevention programming. But that would still be included in the fee of up to 3%. So, uh, I, I want to thank Commissioner McBride for the work that she done on this. I know that this has been a very contentious issue uh, throughout the Commonwealth. Uh, commissioners have been in many cities and towns and have heard from municipalities. One, they, they lack a lot of education surrounding this issue. Um, you know, We have to remember where this came from. It was a ballot initiative that turned into a law, which turned into where we are today. And so in a lot of that time, I'm not too sure how many of the municipal officials were actually following uh, the path. Uh, having said that, and I appreciate the comments of uh, Commissioner uh, Title, I do want to uh, just add that that last bullet point, additional substance abuse prevention programming during the first years of operation. From a public health perspective, a lot of these cities and towns are creating substance abuse prevention task force in their towns. And that when we are introducing a substance, uh, we, talk, we like to talk about alcohol and say how alcohol is a substance, well marijuana is a substance as well. And so additional funding to already established task force and, and prevention programming, um, I can see as an anticipated cost because clearly we need a lot of prevention and we need education. Um, I've heard from across the state that our public safety personnel are being called because people don't know how to utilize the substance. They're overutilizing the substance. There's concerns that you know something bad is happening to them. They call 911, ambulances come and people tend to get attention that way. So, I really think that the substance abuse prevention programming can be added to the list. Um, I understand that for some people it's optional, but I really think that as this starts to as this starts to progress 
and these facilities start to open, we need to start to talk more about public health and the public health aspect of this because the reality is, and we see it with alcohol all the time, when you introduce a substance to cities and towns and sometimes in those equitable areas and you have people of lower income and you have people that have been disproportionately affected, this does have an effect. And so instead of hiding our heads in the sand and pretending it doesn't exist, I really think that part of the conversation with municipalities needs to be some of the public health aspects of this, just as public safety with intersections and um, the, the uh, attention of the public safety personnel. So just as an added thought. And I, you know, I, I totally support getting more information on this because there is a lot of anecdotal data, uh, but uh, uh, we don't have a lot of facts. And, and I know that the survey, aside from asking a lot of questions, is also asking, if I'm correct, Commissioner Doyle voluntarily uh, for the respondents to send us a copy of the executed host community agreements, which I think, I, I think it's imperative uh, that, that we have uh, the opportunity to view that. Um, I'd like to uh, pick up on that, though, and um, ask the commission or the commissioners to um, consider what, if, if we have the ability to uh, to collect these agreements either voluntarily or subsequently if we, uh, if we decide to modify our regulations to require the submission of HCAs, and I'm not suggesting we debate that right now, but my, my question is what do we do with these host community agreements? What review could we do? Um, what enforcement, if any, rights do we have? I, I, I think collecting data is great. Um, I'm totally in support of it, but I, I, I recall a conversation that we had at the commission back in December about what role, if any, we should play um, in respect to enforcing these host community agreements. And I, I think, based upon just the anecdotal evidence that we've got to date, that it's worthy, it's worth having that discussion again. And I'd just be interested in, in the thoughts of the other commissioners. And again, I support the idea of coming back and revisiting this in two weeks. But I'd like to get some thoughts about uh, what, if any, enforcement authority we might have on this. I think the first question that I have, being one of the um, non-lawyers on the commission. Well, that's why I was asking the question, so go ahead. I can get you therapy if you need it, Mr. Chairman. Um, what do you think, do I? Is as, a <laughs> um, as a regulatory body, what what um, role, what legal avenue do we have? I mean, and I think that's something for the attorneys to answer. I don't know if our general counsel wants to, to take a, a chance at that, but I think first and foremost, there's been a lot of anecdotal things said to me that, well, you as a commission can enforce this, or you can tell them to go back and change this and renegotiate. 
Um, for me, it's a legal question. What are we legally allowed to do? Uh, because I think we need to set realistic expectations and, and not have people think that we can just change things on a whim. We're not the legislature. Um, we can't just no change longer. chapter 55 no longer. Thank God this weekend. Um, but I think we have to really be truthful and honest with people um, and not give any false hope as to what we can physically uh, do here at the commission. I, I agree with that comment. Um, I, I don't know that we want a definitive answer, um, um, but I, I do think it's something that if, if the, uh, what I was looking for is the Commission's willingness to explore this issue um, over the next couple of weeks um, as we come back to review this document and make a final vote on it to have a more informed opinion about what, if any, uh, um, um, legal obligations we have. But I'm, I'm happy to sustain a conversation as why I raise the topic. Commissioner Title. Um, my suggestion would be, I like Commissioner McBride's idea of having Issue of local controller general, and then um, then revisit the discussion. That's a much more articulate thing to think about starting to say. So I agree. Uh, are there other suggestions? Or is that my, for you? My, one, my one question is what do you mean expand, Commissioner uh, Title, about the entire issue of local control? Because I think one of the big pieces is the community host agreement. Um, and then, I mean, I've heard a lot of people comment on the zoning process, uh, but that's 351 cities and towns have their zoning process. I would suggest as a starting point the uh, host community agreement and then not to skip ahead but the local equity guidance and then um, the letter from the legislators about, um, well I have it in front of me, it is our interpretation and intent that the DCC has the authority this letter from, uh, this to require. Sure. This letter from Kuzak and uh, Jalen. This is a letter from Senator Jalen and Representative Kuzak and it says it is our interpretation and intent that the DCC has the authority and is required to therefore review any such community host agreements to include, ensure their compliance with the statute. So I think that um, that issue and then the two areas of guidance. Sure, I think Commissioner McBride just reviewed with respect to host community agreement and then what would the fifth agenda item here be uh, economic development that or you think yeah, the uh, excuse me, the third agenda item the equity focus means the guys that we'll discuss shortly. That would be the extent of the uh, conversation. So not zoning. No, I appreciate I appreciate that, and I, I think that we do want public comment on some of these guidance that we've had. Um, I guess my concern is that getting comments on what legislative intent was again will be anecdotal because legislative intent came from the, the legislation that was released from the Committee on Marijuana Policy, uh, which was subsequently debated, changed, and then signed into law. So. Um, being a former legislator, intent changes during the debate. What comes out of the committee is not what usually ends up on the governor's desk. And so yeah. um, while I appreciate the comments and I welcome comments from the public at all times, I just wonder if that's going to be a good use of our. our let, let, let me be explicit. I, 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 I suggest that we take the guidance document that Commissioner McBride just reviewed, the one that we're going to discuss, that uh, Commissioner uh, Title Drew um, discussed that. Um, Certainly welcome input on any topics. Um, obviously consider the input of uh, Senator Jalen and, uh, and uh, Representative Kuzak and get um, input from general counsel, our general counsel, to have that conversation. But I think totally consistent with what you were just saying. Um, clearly we welcome comments on anything at any time, but in terms of our deliberation on the legal issues, I think the two basic points there are the opinion of general counsel and the, uh, the letter from the senator and the representative. So then it'd be my hope that we take each one of these individually so that we establish, and maybe the executive director can, can say that for us, that we initially established that we're going to take a two-week comment period on the host community agreement guidance and then come back as a commission and revisit that. I don't know if that needs a vote or we can just establish it, but I think we should keep them separate because people are going to get confused. Wait, I'm, so keep what's, I, I'm, I'm confused now by what you're suggesting. Keep what's separate. What our intention is in each one. I mean, we have three guidance up there. Yeah, no, we're just, right now we're talking about the host community agreement guidance. That's all we're talking about. And the, the uh, what is on the table is to take two weeks, get public comment, reconvene um, to discuss host community agreement guidance with the input we've gotten from the public, obviously, but, but the input we've gotten from the representative and the senator, input from our general counsel, and then obviously discussion of the commission. 
and so we're speaking specifically, and we'll, we'll have the same discussion for the other four issues, but for the host community agreement guidance, specifically what I just articulated. Okay. I have a question. Sure. Um, and I may have misheard Commissioner Kendall. I thought she was also suggesting that we do that same week, same to be common period on the guidance on um, equitable policy. She was, she was, as a matter of order, I was just saying this week. We'll come back and discuss that oh. um, when we get to that uh, agenda item. But I think it's perfect for the suggestion, but let's, I think that's Commissioner Flanagan's suggestion that we treat each of these issues one by one. Yes. So we'll, we'll, we'll have that conversation. So unless there's objection, I don't believe a vote is necessary. We just will come back. We, we have this on the agenda. For, issue back up in two weeks we would welcome comments from anybody um, that wishes to make them um, and we will seek guidance as well as the comments we will seek guidance from our general counsel on the legal issues if i may mr chairman I, I just want to be clear as far as setting expectations i think it's important that we if this is the commission's decision to accept comments on it that's we can accommodate that we'll post a notice on our website right. and uh, encourage we'll give folks a, an avenue by which they can submit comments right. To the commission's general mailbox, we I, I think it's it would be important to get comments by that Monday. That's fine. So as to compile and circulate to each of you. I think that's a great suggestion. So absolutely. So I would recommend accepting comments through the sixth, uh, August sixth. Our, our next meeting is August 9th, that Thursday. That's, I think that's a great suggestion. Thank you. Uh, just to accommodate us from a staff standpoint of compiling all of that. Okay. Are we all set? Everybody comfortable? Uh, I have a comment. Yeah, go ahead, Commissioner Cohn. So as a matter of process, when we did the draft regulations, I believe we took a vote, and then we had an open comment period, and then when we came back, um, each of us would make motions for changes based on public comment. So do we want to follow that same process? For sure. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's necessary. I think just to have this consideration on this. So do you want? Well, but I think, but I, I think that there needs to be a motion approve that uh, that recommendation thank you so i think we're ready to move on to the next uh, guidance topic which is uh, positive impact plan and again my thanks to commissioner title for uh, for her leadership on this uh, are you prepared to uh, talk about this commissioner title i don't have a presentation prepared but you're still incredibly articulate so i'm sure you'll, you'll be fine um so if you look at the draft it's um it's fairly straightforward it's just three pages and it's
and then it goes through how the commission has interpreted that term disproportionately impacted communities, and then it explains the elements of a plan, which are goals, programs, and then measurement and accountability, um, and goes into more background on each of those, along with some examples of positive impact plan programs, but it's very clear that the programs may include, but are not limited to the items on that list. And then finally, it discusses um, metrics for measurement and accountability and the measures that the commission has put into place as examples of metrics, um, but not necessarily what the plan has to do. Great, again, my, uh, my thanks to your uh, leadership on this. Are there questions or comments on this? And you're, you're not proposing to defer this? You're, you're any questions or comments on uh, on this uh, document, Commissioner Doyle? No, I, it's actually I just couldn't hear Commissioner Title. No, she'd like to. Get, she's you know we can obviously discuss it. She's she's no reason to defer the, uh, the discussion okay. and vote on this. Okay, so then um, yes, <laughs> I have. Um, I thought overall this is very good and in fact hit on themes that we have um, been highlighting as we go around the state, talking to municipalities about flexible zoning and not just throwing everything into the industrial zone because that was um, often what was done with uh, the medical marijuana. That's the wrong one. That's the wrong one. Oh, Sorry, about the positive impact plan. You're, you're, on, oh, the next, I apologize. you're on the next I agenda apologize. item. I expect you to vote this because we'll get to you. We will get, we will get to you very quickly. I apologize. I was doing two things at once and look where it got me. So I had no comments on this one. I thought it was <laughs> Did I scare you? I apologize. Yes. I apologize. Uh, we also set her up for the next one. Now she's really scared. Not, of the next one. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it's good comments. You'll, okay. uh, yeah. So we are on the guidance on required positive impact plan and diversity plan. Just to be clear, um, are there any comments or questions from other commissioners? I do. I was doing two things at once. Commissioner Flagg. Commissioner Flagg. No. Um, I have no comments. I think. Appreciate your leadership. I think this is important uh, uh, as part of our uh, objectives to build a equitable and diverse industry. So I appreciate this, um, and I think it will be very helpful to the applicants to have clarity on what we are looking for them to provide as part of the application process. So I would like a motion to approve this guidance. I move to approve this guidance um, subject to staff review. Okay. Can I have a second, please? Uh, let the record show that uh, Commissioner Tyler made a motion to approve subject to staff uh, uh, input uh, and modification um, editing um, and uh, Commissioner uh, McBride seconded the motion. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Let the uh, record show the Commission has approved uh, this guidance and again thank you very much Commissioner Tyler. Um, I think you're still on uh, on point, however. Um, the next item is equity-focused municipal guidance, and uh, I think you've already been put on alert that Commissioner Doyle might have a thing or two to say on this topic. But could you get us started, please? Sure. Um, and just uh, at the outset, I do suggest that we put this out for public comment for two weeks. Fine. Um, we'll discuss that. This is, uh, what I'm referring to as local equity guidance, and uh, I would say it's different from our previous guidance in that it is a set of recommendations, um, purely recommended policies, and they are in response to um, advice from our Cannabis Advisory Board, um, as well as several local elected officials that have reached out and said that they want to have an equitable process at the local level but they're not sure how to do it and would like some recommendations um, to be walked through the process so um, the document starts with a background on the various equity related provisions in the law and then it goes through an overview of um, a series of questions that a city or town could ask um, and discuss related to its local values and its own equity goals understanding that every municipality is different, but um, as a suggestion for how to approach the process, the questions are, are caps on licenses necessary? What license types will be allowed in the municipality? Should a local excise tax be authorized? How should each license type be zoned? What municipal entity or entities will oversee the prospective licensee process? What process will prospective licensees need to follow, and what is the timeline for that process? 
And finally, how will prospective licensees be selected to move forward, and what municipal entity or entities will negotiate the host community agreement with them? And then it goes through each question with a set of recommendations. So um, happy to discuss it now, also happy to um, make a similar motion as we did on the host community agreement guidance and come back and rediscuss after a few comments. So well, let's, let's have a discussion right now just so in case there are any issues that are raised, um, we have two weeks to address those issues or concerns and then uh, based upon the precedent we set with the other guidance, we'll take a vote. Um, um, but first let's have a discussion. Are there any comments or questions on, uh, on this document? Mr. Doyle, I guess <laughs> you've already raised your hand, so you're first. Can I talk about the positive impact? <laughs> sure, yeah, please do. Okay, um, okay. Uh, as I was saying before, this dovetails nicely with uh, some of the things that we've been presenting during um, municipal outreach. And some of the comments I have are really more mundane um, and uh, can be, I think, dealt with by staff. We actually learned some things as we went around uh, municipalities in terms of words and um, references that we used in the municipal guidance that we probably need to correct, and they're repeated here, so I'll, I'll make those suggestions. But it's sort of things like references to package stores, apparently that's a little confusing because section 15 is broader than that. So um, I would suggest that we take out those references and I'll recommend that we take it out of the other municipal guidance as well. Um, and then uh, again, some of it is more wording things and minor things like uh, typos. Um, one thing that um, I had a question on is in the buffer zone discussion on page four which is about halfway down the page. Um, and so that's where uh, we recite the, 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 well, we paraphrase the statute and describe it. You know, the statute sets forth the 500-foot buffer around uh, established kindergarten through 12 uh, public or private schools and uh, identify that the municipalities may choose to reduce the size of that buffer and caution that it's unclear, it's, it's not uh, a matter that has been reviewed by courts as to whether creating buffer zones at the local level, such as around parks, or, or uh, well, I'm saying playgrounds, it says parks, are legally permissible. I think the next sentence um, may be just a, a little strong. And so I, I think we have the right idea in the rest of the paragraph. Um, I just would like to maybe work on rewording that a little bit. And if that is for people following along, it basically just, um, yeah, the commission suggested additional buffer zones may not be necessary and cautions communities against acting arbitrarily. So I think we could get that same uh, thought across uh, with perhaps different language. So I'd like to work on doing that, bringing that back in that two weeks. Um, the next two paragraphs after that, and then the paragraph at the top of five, are probably uh, at the area where I'm most uncomfortable, and that is where we are summarizing the state of research on certain issues related to marijuana today, and um, that makes me very uncomfortable, doing that as a commission, and I think the same points that we're making in here can be made without um, characterizing research a certain way. And so I would prefer to pull those out um, while still retaining the underlying thought about um, you know, being very responsible as a community in terms of looking at what the actual impacts on a community are when you put a marijuana facility so uh, that's essentially my comment on that. Um, if you wanted to close your work with the oh, that's that that Yeah. That would be and yeah, I think I think there's actually already language here that we can use and get to the same place <coughs> without um, referring to that research or characterizing research out there because research is ongoing and will change on a regular basis. Uh, I think the last very 
substantive thing on the same area of the guidance is um, the issue of, um, and I applaud the thought here in terms of uh, making a streamlined process on the municipal level. Um, and for those who don't have this in front of them, uh, the section starts off, what municipal entity or entities will oversee the prospective licensing process, select licensees to move forward, and negotiate post-community agreements? And then the guidance goes on to suggest that it essentially, if I'm understanding it correctly, should be one entity that does both. And um, my concern is, is that I don't think that is typically done e either at the state level or the municipal level where we've got open meeting law bodies involved. Um, looking at us as an example, uh, typically our staff uh, or the executive director or general counsel will negotiate a contract and then present it to us. Um, so I'm a little worried if we suggested it be one body, we're actually gonna slow the process down open meeting law bodies take time to meet, et cetera. So I, if we can get, um, if we perhaps can work together on that same thought and um, maybe refine it a little. I mean, it, it, it's clear the objective is trying to make it as efficient as exactly. possible. Just agree to work on this given that we have, you know, not being blind to this conference. 
but I'm, I'm actually quite comfortable just giving this conversation that we're going to come back to something that I think we're all going to be pretty close to the line. So let's work on that over the next two weeks rather than discuss it. We'll take a minute today if that's okay. That's fine. Uh, I do think we should, um, we don't have to talk about it right now, but I, I do think that we should be comfortable presenting what research says. That, 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 I, look, I will I will agree to put that on the agenda at some extent. I guess that's a really complicated conversation, but I agree with you it should be had. So I, uh, I think ownership will get there shortly. Okay. My, my one concern, and I appreciate the work that Commissioner Heidel did, I know that you put a lot of thought into the documents that you produced, and I appreciate all that. Um, my one concern is that with a guidance coming from a regulatory body, is there a need to include studies at all um, and sort of be like listen this is this is the guidance for municipalities regardless of what the studies show this is like what we're saying for you to get the, the job done um, because I think we can get into the conversation of people saying well you know you put this study in here and I bet this study to counter it and then it turns into a conversation that doesn't need to be so if we keep on the track that as a regulatory body we're just trying to guide cities and towns and saying uh, listen let's get this done uh, because I look at uh, the process on page five, and it says what process will prospective licenses need to follow and what is the timeline, like that's regulatory. That's the stuff that I think we should put in here. Um, and while I appreciate all the work that Dr. Johnson has done uh, and is doing on our research piece of this, maybe this should be a little more black and white and clear. I think that's the same uh, one Commissioner. I think that is actually a worthy conversation. I think that's the conversation that Commissioner Kyle was suggesting we have. So I think there's, Let's work on this specific document and this issue, but then we'll also have the broader conversation to your point, Commissioner Flanagan, about how we use and how we reference research in our document. So I think I'm completely in accord with that. Commissioner McBride? So then, uh, just as uh, we have precedent for uh, host community economic guidance, can I get a uh, recommendation that uh, we agree to um, the language? I'm trying to remember your language, Commissioner uh, McBride, but you have a commissioner talk, but essentially to put this on the agenda for two weeks to work the issue in the interim, allow for public comment up to 5 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time on April, which is on August uh, 6th. Move that we publish the draft guidance on local equity and open a public comment period, open until 5 p.m. EST, Monday, August 6th. Okay. And it's on the agenda. Can I have a yes second, please? Second. Uh, all in favor? Uh, the uh, commission, no, the branch of the commission has to approve that. And again, uh, my thanks to Commissioner uh, Title for your work on this. Mr. Chairman, yes, sir. This is an aside related to the publication of this, but it will also circulate to the entire advisory board, both pieces. I, I think that's a great idea. Explicitly solicit their feedback. I think that's a great idea. Um, the next agenda item, I think, is going to be a little bit more straightforward, perhaps, but uh, Commissioner Doyle, um, would you take lead on the report to the legislature? Acknowledge uh, the contributions of uh, our Director of Government Affairs, uh, Dave Blakeman, and our General Counsel, Christine Bailey, uh, as well as our Executive Director, uh, Sean Collins, in helping bring this document to where it is today and hopefully getting it filed with the legislature. Uh, this is a statutory requirement uh, that we comments on um, the state of uh, of agriculture, farmers, and businesses of all sizes in the uh, marijuana or adult use industry. And so we have prepared a legislative report that uh, provides background and history on how we got to where we are today. It explains the governing law, explains the uh, work done by the commission and its staff, and talks about the different uh, licensing opportunities that are specifically targeted to farmers and businesses sizes, as well as the production growth controls on cultivation of marijuana. Uh, it also talks about the fees, uh, I'm sorry, steps taken under uh, the leadership of the chairman to reduce uh, fee structure and costs for uh, small businesses and the agricultural community related to uh, the adult use for marijuana industry. It also discusses uh, training that will be available, particularly in 
after July 1st, 2019 through the Responsible Vendor Training Program, which in itself may create business opportunities uh, for those who do not wish to engage directly in the adult use marijuana business, but are willing to provide training to those that do, as well as the training provided through our social equity program and the opportunities that that will create for uh, small businesses and uh, farmers. We also discuss operating requirements, including security, and how that works to benefit small businesses and farmers, as well as discussing very specific issues uh, relating to farmers regarding agricultural preservation restrictions and um, what's known as 61A law, that refers to General Law, 60, General law Chapter 61A, which is tax protection for uh, land in agricultural use. And uh, particularly with regard to this section, I must uh, recognize that we, in developing this report, worked with the Massachusetts Department of Agricultural Resources and very much appreciate the very substantive and thoughtful comments they provided to us on the report. Um, we also recommend uh, legislation to protect the trade secrets and other commercial or financial information of farmers and or businesses of all sizes to uh, essentially add to, with regard to the, the um, Cannabis Control Commission solely, an additional exemption that mimics an exemption available under federal law to protect trade secrets and commercial or financial information obtained from a person to the Cannabis Control Commission if such information is deemed by the commission to be privileged or confidential. And you will be informed in that determination by an abundance of federal case law on the interpretation of the parallel federal law on this issue. So we are recommending that the legislature consider that. We highlight some of the complications <coughs> under federal law as it relates to marijuana, most of which are well known. And um, look forward to submitting this uh, to the legislature. Any comments or questions? Commissioner McBride. I just want to thank Commissioner Doyle. I know that a ton of work went into this um, and that it was not necessarily the easiest document to put together. So um, I just wanted to see my appreciation for the work that you did. Thank you. You have comments? Questions? Commissioner Doyle. Um, I agree. I want to thank Commissioner Doyle for all of your work on this and your just passion for um, helping out farmers in general and in understanding they're very complicated issues. I don't have um, any suggested changes to the document, um, but I do have a suggestion about our next report, which is due at the end of this year. Yes. I think it's probably safe to say that um, we will likely have concerns about the participation of farmers and businesses of all sizes. I believe it's already um, in our research agenda that we are tracking the numbers and that we are tracking the barriers to entry. I would suggest or propose that a month before the next report is due, um, we have a report on those items and that we discuss amongst ourselves our additional recommendations for legislation for that second one. Yeah. Great. Okay. Mr. Chair, sure. great. Just for uh, context of that, so Commissioner Title, I've written note to, to do that. Um, this statutory section requires us to submit the report to the Drug Committee on Marijuana Policy as we did with the previous report relative to the DPH transfer. It also includes the House and Senate Committee means and I will also submit it to the House and Senate clerks just so that the entire legislature has access to it. Um, it. The due date of course was one year of passage of the law so that's why it's in 28. Uh, the next report is due the end of the calendar year so we will, I'll make a note to end of this calendar year. Correct. Okay. Any other comments? I have a motion to uh, approve the uh, release of this report to the bodies that uh, the executive director is starting to make. Uh, let the record show Commissioner uh, the Commissioner Planning and made motion to approve, seconded by Commissioner Doyle. All in favor? Aye. Let the record show that the Commission has been approved uh, the release of this report. And again, uh, my thanks and our thanks to Commissioner Doyle for your leadership. Uh, next topic is um, uh, economic empowerment applicants. And I just want to make a few comments uh, before we get started on this. One is, um, as I mentioned at the beginning of the meeting, uh, at our last meeting two weeks ago, um, Commissioner Tuttle asked uh, that we put this agenda item on our agenda for the uh, next meeting, which we have done. 
Um, as I've mentioned, um, there was a survey that was released on Friday to the 300 plus uh, uh, applicants for priority status, economic empowerment priority status. We have 60 plus responses. Um, uh, we will hopefully get more responses in at a subsequent meeting. I think discuss this in, in more detail, but uh, I think it, uh, at a very high level, it, it identifies some issues that we want to at least be aware of and, and discuss. And so we are going to put up uh, one slide with just some high level summaries, but I, I can't caveat enough that we can't jump to conclusions or, or take this as gospel um, based upon what is right now a relatively small number of responses compared to the audience that we're seeking input from. But I still think it's important to put high level on the table as long as uh, I, I provide that caveat. Um, the other thing is that um, I also want to provide a second caveat, which is this is, this is a, a concern I think that we all have in that uh, the law is very clear on, uh, on the requirements of, uh, of how this industry rolls out and, uh, and how it affects and uh, includes um, candidates from disproportionately impact communities and from other diversity um, um, from targets. And we take that seriously. Um, we will monitor it. Uh, we will change what we're doing if we see it's not working and we're not going to rest until it's done. Um, I, I, you know, I take that commitment extraordinarily seriously. And I think I can speak for the other commission members um, um, as well. Uh, so I think it's very important that we discuss this and, 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 and start um, talking about uh, how it's working and, and how we might want to uh, try to uh, help this, uh, these sets of objectives along. I will also, though, caveat this by saying it's early. Um, and I personally am not ready to draw any conclusions um, after seven provisional licenses or five provisional licenses have been issued and seven more will be discussed today. Um, I think it is premature to draw any conclusions about how this industry is going to evolve. It's going to take some time. As I said, we will monitor how this process works. We will tweak whatever we need to tweak to make it work. If we need to go back to the legislature and ask for changes in the legislation, we will do so. We will not rest until we get this right. But let's not, as I said, jump to conclusions after five provisional licenses have been issued. Um, I really appreciate people's understanding and patience of that. Uh, with that said, um, Commissioner Tyler, before I show the high level results of the survey, do you have um, other comments you'd like to make? I don't think the survey results will be breaking news to anyone in the No, I think, so. I think that's fair. Uh, so we have two slides. Uh, one is just the, the high level of the survey itself. And Commissioner Tyler, since you know, you provide the leadership on survey, would you mind describing and how it was, how it was prepared and how it was distributed? Sure. Um, actually, I need to thank. Uh, several members of our staff, but particularly Dr. Julie Johnson, Cedric Sinclair, and Martine Russell for their help uh, turning this around in time for us to review it today. Um, so this survey was primarily to identify um, the barriers that the economic empowerment applicants are facing and to do so now because we only have um, three applications from those 123 applicants. Three completed applicants. Three completed. Well, uh, all three were all four, four packets, packets that have been submitted this Right. Time. All four packets is different from completed because right. if it was completed due to the fact that they have priority, it would have come in front of us right, right now. Today. Right. So it was sent on Friday. Um, as of yesterday, we received 63 responses. Um, the survey remains open. Um, there are also some uh, fill-in-the-blank questions, particularly if you um, identified an additional barrier to entry that wasn't listed. So I expect when the survey closes, um, we'll get a look at that. Is there a close date on the survey just for public information? Or? I don't know. Not as of today. Okay. But I think that's something you can say. Because I, I do commit to, at some future point, when we've got a greater level of response and a chance to review some of the written comments, that we come back and have a much more complete discussion of the survey at a subsequent meeting. So any other comments before we show the, uh, the high-level data, Commissioner Tom? And so the survey asked, if you did not apply, why not? And then ask the respondents to check all of the answers that were applicable and then to rank them from one to five um, and also include any other reasons. So you can see in the order that they were ranked in some difficulty raising funds or capital, still developing business concept or plan, difficulty obtaining approval from a city or town, my desired license type is not offered, specifically social consumption or delivery, and difficulty understanding the application. 
you have any comments or any comments from other commissioners or questions? Well, Commissioner Flanagan? I have a couple of concerns that given the fact that over 300 were sent out and we've only gotten roughly 60 back, <coughs> this is very preliminary. The second thing is that we are all moving down the same path at the same time. And I feel that the fact that this is a new process for many people here in Massachusetts, that we need to keep in mind the fact that when it comes to funding and it comes to business plans and it comes to dealing with the cities and towns, um, that that is going to be a concern early on because everyone is sort of getting their ducks in a row at the same time. Um, and I don't mean to harp on the cities and towns because I realize that they're, they're facing a lot in a short amount of time. But the reality is that I really feel that we're doing as much as we can as a commission to move this process forward. Um, I think, uh, you know, given the fact that the license type that people want are not offered, that's not going to change until we take up the regs again. We know that we know that conversation is coming. So if people are holding out, I don't see that as a barrier. I see that as a fact that we promise to take the conversation up. We are going to take that conversation up when we open the regs, um, and so people can either choose to try to do something else or they can wait it out. Um, but there's also no guarantee that those two types of deliveries, um, those two types of licenses are even going to come to fruition. We, we just don't know that yet um, because we haven't had the conversation. Okay. Having said that, I think that given our community outreach, um, the vision of our of our commission, um, Shakia's doing a great job when she's starting to go out to, to people in the community, that's going to help this process. Um, you know, we realize that the money piece of this is difficult. Short of being able to go to a bank, people are trying to find creative ways to fund their plans. Um, and I really think that we can have a more substantive conversation once we've gotten more responses back. Um, I think that, you know, if we're very strategic about this, if we're very thoughtful about this, um, give people time. Um, you know, I'm impressed that this many people responded by said Friday because that's a quick turnaround. But I think that we need to have this conversation a little bit down the road um, as people are coming online and people are being part of the process. You know, I can see I can see the concern. I, I understand the concerns. I mean clearly looking at at this graph. Um, but I think this is also the this also has the possibility to spark some fear in people who may now say, wait, if all these people are having problems, I may not want to participate we don't want to do that. Uh, we want this to be in as inclusive process as possible. Uh, you know, coming from North Central Massachusetts, we're often the last people thought of in the Commonwealth. Uh, but if you go to the Berkshires, they're saying that they're often the last people thought of in the Commonwealth. There are different types of um, there are different types of thoughts about this in different parts of the state, and I think we just need to work the plan that we have with the community outreach person and the social, social equity program that we have, and then people will start to understand and will be able to get some of the services that they've been looking for and some of the supportive services like business plan uh, creation and, and funding and banking and, and all the things that are going to be part of this. Commissioner McMart? Want to use my microphone? Here, here. Um, I just had a, an additional suggestion uh, because I've been in like the municipal hope thinking about cities and towns for ever, it seems. Um, would, given that data point, um, about yeah, difficulty of obtaining approval from a city or town, could we add a question to the survey asking what cities, what municipalities the um, folks responding have been talking to? And the reason I ask that is because it kind of goes to that general um, question about trying to collect as much info as we can um, to differentiate what's anecdotal um, versus what is a real issue and and to that end where there is something that can be done to help resolve that issue. Um, and the other piece of this, and I'll, I'll throw this out there, I know that I've um, talked about it before, and it's something that I, one of the first meetings when I was appointed to this commission um, that I had the, this issue about post community agreements in cities and towns was brought up at that point in time. And I said at that point in time to um, the individuals in the meeting, you know, it would be really helpful if we could.
could have a conversation with municipalities that were on the positive side of this, that were on the side where you know, they were thinking about this and actively putting pieces into place um, to, to welcome businesses and present a forum or you know, some, some sort of, um, whether it was a forum with a webinar or you know, some, some sort of event where there could be a conversation that wasn't necessarily this commission talking about it, but was actually municipalities presenting to other municipalities about where there were opportunities and how they were approaching it. Because I think as we talked about all the way along, my sense here is that there are a lot of municipalities that are stepping back and sort of waiting to see what the lay of the land looks like um, and waiting to see, you know, what does my neighbor, what's my neighbor gonna do? And you know, I kind of wanna look and see what they're doing before I dip my toe in here. So, I think that um, this is to, to sort of you know, dovetail with what Commissioner Flanagan just said. I think that there are a lot of pieces here that can still come into play. I look forward to getting you know the full spectrum of results from this survey. But I think that there are other components here that um, we also need to be asking and also need to be talking about. Thank you. Other comments? Uh, I would just like to um, add my support for a uh, breakdown to get better understanding of that particular difficulty of obtaining approval from a city or town. It would be interesting to um, get more detail on that. Is that it? That's it. Okay. So I, uh, I, I started this conversation by saying, you know, these are preliminary results and, and being trained in statistics, I, I, you know, I know that you, know, you can't jump to conclusions um, and I do think it's important that we get hopefully a, a greater level of response and get the kind of more specificity that Commissioner Doyle and Commissioner McBride were requesting. Um, that being said, um, you know, I, I look at this and my own reaction is, yeah, difficulty getting funds. We, that's not a surprise, we know that. Um, it's something we've been working on. Um, if anything, it, it, it kind of incensed me personally to just work harder on that, because uh, I think it is, it's ultimately, in my opinion, gonna be the biggest obstacle. But, uh, so I, I think that's one point. Um, the other thing that comes out of this is, even though it's preliminary and even though it's 10 people, difficulty understanding the application, some we should, we should find out if that's an issue, because that's an easy fix. That's an easy fix. And, and so, to me, this is, this is not, you know, kind of a scorecard. It's not who's doing what wrong or anything. It's just, it's pretty interesting and, 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 and things that are worth considering and pursuing. And I, I thought you were heading in this direction, but then you took kind of a detour, um, Commissioner McBride. Um, one of the things that I think would be useful, um, I think surveys are great, and we should get some more data here. I think focus groups are actually far more helpful um, in terms of really understanding issues, and, and my suggestion would be, um, obviously we need the help of our staff on this, my, my suggestion would be uh, maybe let's let this go for a little while longer, get some more um, feedback uh, and survey responses, but once we have you know something that's a little bit more uh, concrete in terms of statistical significance, I actually think we should have some focus groups of, uh, around the state where we just listen to some of these applicants and, and hear firsthand what are they running into in terms of municipal municipal issues. If they're not understanding the application, what is it that's confusing? Because again, that's an easy fix for us. But I think the best way we're going to get, I think the survey is great, but I think it should be followed up by uh, focus groups and clearly we need to do um, a few around the state if people agree with that proposal. So I, I would suggest that uh, that's something that we would uh, pursue. I'm happy to work with the uh, executive director and the staff in terms of how to organize that and bring it back to the commission for approval. But I think that would be a really important next step and something we should do relatively quickly. Delighted to say, I believe that's already in the works. Oh, it's always the only best ideas are always the staff doing it before I've even thought of it, so that's great. <laughs> We're working on it. <laughs> that's wonderful to hear. But to your point about the understanding the application, I, I take great pride in our application. And, and, I, and I wasn't being critical. I wasn't being critical whatsoever. And I will endeavor to talk to those ten folks. <laughs> so you better not say that. No. <laughs> Okay. We are working. So there's, there's good follow up, and, and I do commit, as I said earlier, to um, uh, we should talk. Do we want to put a time limit on the uh, on the survey? But uh, I do commit to bringing this back onto the agenda when we've had um, we get some, hopefully some more uh, responses. So, what are your thoughts, Mr. Executive Director, about that time limit on the uh, survey? Well, so I, I think we definitely need a time. We need to, to close it at some point. I think it's worth identifying it hasn't even been out there for a week yet. So 
you know, about 20% response. Um, and it, I will talk to folks on the staff about uh, what percentage response rate do we kind of deem it to be uh, substantive or sufficient enough to, um, to be scientific, but also uh, wanted to make sure we can send possibly a reminder to those folks to, um, to complete the survey and then uh, also bearing in mind we need some time to turn around and compile those responses. Right especially since some questions do have narrative response. So I, I guess what I'll say is I won't commit at this point to have a discussion of this on the agenda next time because we might not have all that done, but I will commit to at the next commission meeting having a timeline for having it on the agenda at a subsequent meeting. That's right. Commissioner Tom? So um, I really like those suggestions. They're, uh, they largely echo what um, I had on my list for me at Next Step. I do think it's worth noting out loud that um, the law is clear that we shall prioritize review and licensing decisions for these applicants and the fact that the benefit here is priority means that the more time goes on and the more licenses we grant the less meaningful that benefit becomes so i do think there is a sense of urgency here that we should recognize um, absolutely love the idea of a working group um, with those cities uh, general council has mentioned that as well um, if you'd like, uh, Commissioner McBride, I would like to take the lead with you on forming that. Not the staff to provide that. I, I'm, I'm definitely happy to do that, but I actually am I'm sort of, I guess I'm kind of throwing it out there that I would actually love to see an organization other than the commission putting something like that together. Um, I mean, if it's something where, you know, our imprimatur of the commission would be helpful, then I, I can appreciate that. But, um, Yes, I threw, I, I threw it out there for a lot of people, and I was taking a lot of time. Well, I think Well, I guess then, as part of the public comment, the organizations that are interested can let us know. Um, I would add to, um, in terms of a suggestion to add to the survey, what municipalities the applicants have been speaking to. Um, I think that's a good idea. Also, as part of the public comment period, they could certainly reach out to us and let us know about that as well. Um, uh, yes. So uh, I had another um, great suggestion which came from our advisory board, um, Kim Napoli in particular, um, who have been working with uh, commission members on presentations uh, to lawyers that um, uh, laid out the regulations and the application process, and she suggested doing similar events for econ empowerment applicants. Any other comments? Yes, one more. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, I think this is my last one. Um, I do think it's important that all five of us hear directly from the Econ Empowerment applicants um, as opposed to just seeing the survey results because as several people have mentioned, there are limitations. That, you just the far yeah. Therefore, yeah. I suggest that um, we explore partnering with cities um, perhaps uh, the large cities on our disproportionate areas of impact list on organizing hearings and having different commissioners attend them and hear from the public, particularly inviting the kind of power we have. Can I just uh, ask you uh, for a specific definition of the word hearings? When I think hearings, I think it's something very formal as opposed to listening sessions like we did at the beginning of our process, and I'm not sure what you're proposing. I think we could leave that up to the cities that we're exploring this with if they're interested. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I share your concern that it's probably better to. Talk to Mike. I apologize. Yeah, I share okay. your concern that it's probably better to. You got to be a little closer to Mike. Uh, I share your concern that it may be better to uh, focus to basically categorize these as more as a listening session. <coughs> Let's work offline on this and then and develop a plan and we'll bring it back. Yeah, I, I, I think we're talking about the same thing. I just want to be careful about exactly what the character comes. But uh, I, I, you learn much more by listening to people on the and you know, asking questions and you know, seeing survey responses. Those surveys are great. So I think we're all on board with doing something. Um, I don't think a motion is necessary on this. Uh, we have some work to do, which is good. Um, um, I will say I share Commissioner Title's sense of urgency, um, not because 
we have only three applicants thus far, and we've only given five provisional licenses, none of which are deep enough empowerment. That is not my source of concern. My source of concern is exactly the same, or urgency is exactly the same as Commissioner Title, which is that priority loses its benefit if it lasts too long. So I think this is something, while these data are not conclusive, we will get more information um, both through the survey and through the other um, uh, mechanisms we just talked about. Um, I, I personally have an enormous sense of urgency about figuring this out and continuing to learn how to make this happen. So, um, if there are no other comments on this topic, I think the last topic for discussion is a request from the executive director to um, uh, have the authority to uh, constitute the suitability review committee. So, do you have a specific request, Mr. Executive Director? Uh, I do. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, as you know. Um, Commission maintains, uh, pursuant to uh, Chapter 94G, the ability um, to and maintains all powers necessary uh, to carry out and effectuate the purpose of the underlying statute, which of course includes the authority to establish a registration and license application process. Uh, and, and embedded within that is the ability to make suitability determinations. Um, the regulations that um, were promulgated pursuant to the law allow that the commission may, in its exercise of its discretion, uh, make a suitability determination. But it goes on to say that the commission may also delegate suitability determinations uh, to the executive director who may appoint a suitability review committee to advise uh, me in that process. So as you can see, it's very permissive language, but it's not um, definitive, and therefore I would, I would seek uh, the approval from the commission, uh, and I would seek that delegation uh, to me and also the purpose of that is actually to establish uh, a suitability review committee and then, of course a process related to that. Uh, so as we endeavor to get through those remaining applications, uh, in the event that something were to come up related to suitability, uh, we could make sure that that process was available to applicants. Uh, of course, continuing uh, as we have would be a recommendation from me to the commission uh, and included in that would be a, a suitability recommendation. Uh, that said, I think to build out that process, this delegation would be necessary. Thank you. Um, are there comments or questions from the executive director? Then uh, can I have a motion to um, approve uh, granting the executive director the uh, delegation you requested? Um, second. second. Okay, let the Director Commissioner Flanagan made the motion to approve, seconded by Commissioner McBride. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Let the uh, Director of the Commission announce the approved. Uh, this uh, delegation of authority to the executive director, um, I would request um, uh, an update at some subsequent meeting relatively soon what you have done with this authority in terms of the structure and process. Happy to. Thank you. I believe that is it for agenda items with respect to discussion. And so I think our next agenda item is to listen to the staff's recommendations discuss and vote on seven completed license applications. Um, I'm not going to read them all now, but I will go through them one by one and then ask for uh, the recommendation of the staff on uh, each of these, starting with um, alternative, alternative therapies group, tier five cultivation, uh, MCN 281255. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I will uh, review these as, as efficiently, but as thoroughly as uh, possible. So. Um, as you indicated, the uh, first application for your consideration today, uh, the entity is named Alternative Therapies Group, and the application is MCN 281255. Uh, the proposed address of the establishment is 10 Industrial Way in Amesbury. Uh, the application is for a cultivation license, a Tier 5 indoor cultivation, uh, which as you know, authorizes a 30,000 uh, and 1 to 40,000 square feet of canopy. This applicant has three other license applications before the commission, uh, two of which are before you today for consideration. Uh, the remaining licenses for um, a retail application. The individuals that have been, have been identified and they are the same in each application are Christopher Edwards as an executive, Julio Fuentes as an executive, uh, George Christie as an executive, and Derek Brock as an executive. There are no other entities uh, that have direct or indirect authority over this establishment. This application or this applicant is a priority applicant uh, as an existing RMD. Uh, they are in compliance with DPH. They intend to be co-located with the adult use business uh, in the town of Amesbury, or city of Amesbury, excuse me. Um, they have a final certificate of registration for dispensing, cultivation, and processing. 
the host community agreement was executed with uh, Angel on April 3rd, and certification uh, to that effect has been provided. They conducted their community outreach meeting on April 19th and published it uh, within seven days or with seven days notice in the New Newburyport Daily News. Um, certification uh, notifications to the municipality as well as the butters has been provided, uh, as well as compliance with the meeting requirements pursuant to our regulations. Uh, no objections were raised when uh, the municipal notice was sent to Amesbury. We received a response from the, mis from the municipality on July 11th, uh, stating the applicant is in fact in compliance with all local ordinances and bylaws. Uh, a summary of their plan to positively impact areas of disproportionate impact includes uh, conducting career fairs in Haverhill and Lynn, scheduling and conducting interviews with individuals from those areas, offering job skill assessments, uh, and providing guidance for interested parties to receive training relevant to the establishment's uh, positions, continuing to make charitable donations to local nonprofit organizations, and finally conducting food drives to benefit local food pantries. As it pertains to suitability, uh, no concerns were raised during the background check on individuals associated with the application, and similarly, no concerns were raised on entities associated with the applications. There were no disclosures of any past civil or criminal actions, and no disclosures of any occupational license issues other jurisdictions or in Massachusetts, and similarly, uh, no disclosures of any business interests in other jurisdictions. They have secured a certificate of good standing from both the Secretary of the Commonwealth as well as the Department of Revenue. Uh, again, they are a post cultivation license in this context. They uh, propose that they can be operational immediately upon being granted a final license uh, as they're an existing RMD and have all human capital expenditures uh, required to begin operations. They have a special permit to operate the facility which was granted on June 25th uh, and no additional construction would be required at that location. Uh, they also currently use a point of sale system programmed uh, already to virtually separate sales of medical and adult use products. Their closed hours of operations are Monday through Sunday 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. They submitted, uh, in compliance with the regulations, summaries of the following plans, policies, and procedures, a security plan, a prevention of diversion plan, a storage and marijuana plan, a transportation plan, inventory procedures, quality control and testing procedures, personnel procedures, dispensing procedures, record keeping procedures, maintenance of financial records policy, and finally, a diversity plan. Uh, all of these summaries are fully compliant with the regulations and have been determined be substantively compliant with uh, our regulations and full compliance with course will be reviewed uh, during our inspections and will be required before a final license is issued. Uh, as far as the diversity plan, they intend to, uh, they have the following goals, which include the following, a diverse workforce, building upon an already diverse workforce of executives and managers, an inclusive work environment, uh, providing an inclusive and flexible environment for employees by identifying and removing any remaining systemic barriers to equitable access, participation, and progression uh, in employment so that all employees have the opportunity to fully contribute to life at the company. Uh, they will implement a range of proactive and preventative strategies and programs, including uh, training and professional development opportunities for their employees to raise awareness of equal opportunity, discrimination, bullying, and harassment, and provide strategies to prevent this from occurring in the workplace. Similarly, they intend to support uh, domestic violence victims the applicant uh, aims to create a working environment that allows employees to safely seek support to address issues arising from domestic and family violence uh, and recognizes that employees may face situations of domestic and family violence that may have an impact on their attendance and, pro and productivity at work and that they are therefore committed to providing support to employees, uh, again, who are affected by domestic and family violence. And lastly, uh, they intend to perform staff surveys, analyze the results, and identify areas for improvement and take corrective steps. Uh, their cultivation plan includes um, the following uh, an extreme, extremely pure water supply, state of the art climate control, minimal amount of, chem of chemicals, and properly sanitized conditions and tools to minimize to the extent possible the spread of any contaminants. Uh, the summary provides further detail with regard to policies and procedures at each of the following stages propagation of seeds and clones, cloning and cutting, vegetation, flowering, and harvesting. Uh, because this is a cultivation license, there are no products. Manufactured. Uh, and similarly, they are not uh, planning to sell retail and, uh, for this license, obviously, so that is not applicable here. Therefore, the uh, Commission staff recommend issuing a provisional license with the following conditions. Final license is subject to the required individual successfully completing a fingerprint based uh, check of state and national criminal history databases. 
final license is subject to certification of the applicant remains in compliance with the EGH regulations. The final license is subject to the inspection and audit uh, to ascertain compliance with the requirements listed in the regulations. The final license is subject to inspection and audit to ascertain that their facilities are compliant with all applicable state and local codes, bylaws, ordinances, and regulations. The applicant shall cooperate with and provide information to the commission's investigators, agents, and employees upon request. And finally, that the provisional license is subject to the payment of the appropriate license fee pursuant to our regulations. Uh, this recommendation is based on the applicant's demonstrated compliance with the laws and regulations of the Commonwealth and suitability for licensure, and upon the evaluation of the thoroughness of the applicant's responses to the required criteria. We certify that due diligence, a due diligence review has uh, been performed, and as of this date, the applicant has demonstrated compliance with the laws and regulations of the Commonwealth and uh, demonstrated suitability for licensure. Accordingly, uh, we recommend this applicant for provisional licensure with the previously stated conditions. Any questions or comments from the commissioners? Uh, we can have a motion to accept the staff recommendation to uh, grant a provisional license to uh, Alternative Therapies Group and CN281255 for Tier 5 cultivation. So moved, second. Uh, at the record, the Commissioner McBride made the motion to approve, seconded by Commissioner Flanagan. All in favor? Aye. Let the record show that this was unanimously, uh, the recognition of the staff was unanimously approved. Thank you. Um, alternative therapy groups, again, MRN281346 for retailing. Sure, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, same entity, uh, application MRN281346. The location of this establishment, though, is different, which is 49 Macy Street, Namesbury. The license is for retail. Again, they have three other applications uh, before the commission. The executives are the same, Christopher Edwards, Julio Fuentes, George Christie, and Derek Brock. And, uh, as before, there are no entities, other entities associated with the application uh, that have direct or indirect authority over the establishment. They have maintained their priority status and are in compliance with uh, DPH. They intend this adult use retail location will not be co located with the RMD. Uh, their current RMD dispensary is located in Salem. Uh, they have obtained their final certificate of registration for dispensing and cultivation and processing through the Department of Public Health. The host community agreement was also executed on April 3rd, and certification has been provided to the commission. The community outreach meeting was also held on April 19th, with publication uh, at least seven days prior in the Newbury Court Daily News. Uh, certification of notice uh, was submitted that included notice to municipality, to the municipality as well as butters, uh, and they've met the meeting requirements. No objections were communicated to the commission from Amesbury. Uh, we received the response on July 11th stating the applicant is in compliance with all local ordinances and bylaws and their plan to positively impact uh, areas of disproportionate impact is the same as their cultivation license, which is to conduct career fairs in Cairo and Lynn, scheduling and conducting interviews with individuals from those areas, offering job skill assessments, and providing guidance for interested parties to receive training relevant uh, to the establishment's position, continuing to make charitable donations to local nonprofit organizations, and finally conducting food drives benefit local food pantries. There were no concerns that were uh, arisen during the background check on individuals or on entities associated with the application, and no disclosures of any past civil or criminal actions, no disclosures of any past or any uh, occupational license issues, and no disclosure of any business interests in other jurisdiction. Uh, they have obtained certificate of good standing from the Secretary of the Commonwealth as well as the Department of Revenue. As far as the management and operations, the proposed timeline to become operational uh, is that the, the applicant states that construction at this new location will commence in late July and should be completed by mid-September. Construction should be subject uh, to architectural approval from the commission. The proposed hours of operation are Monday through Sunday, 9 a.m. to 6.45 p.m. They submitted the summaries of the following plans, policies and procedures, a security plan, prevention of diversion plan, storage of marijuana plan, transportation plan, inventory procedures, quality control and testing procedures, personnel policies, dispensing procedures, uh, record keeping procedures, maintenance of financial records policy, and a diversity plan. They are compliant with submitting all of those summaries. And they, those summaries have been determined to be substantially compliant with the requirements of our regulations. Of course, full compliance will be reviewed. During inspections, it will be required before a final license is issued. Uh, as indicated previously, the summary of the diversity plan includes uh, following goals, uh, diverse workforce, inclusive work environment, support for domestic violence victims, and finally statistics and reassessments. Uh, this is a retail license, so there is no cultivation plan. The 
There's also no uh, accelerated products to be produced. However, their uh, plan for obtaining marijuana or marijuana products is that they are currently vertically uh, integrated uh, EPH R&D for cultivation, processing, and dispensing medical marijuana. The applicant is also applying for an adult use cultivation and product manufacturing license and plans to supply his products for retail purposes. The staff is re uh, recommending issuing a provisional license with the following conditions. Final license is subject to the required individual success successfully completing a fingerprint-based check of state and national criminal industry databases. Final license is subject to certification that, applicant, that the applicant remains in compliance with EPH regulations. Final license is subject to inspection and audit to ascertain compliance with the requirements listed in our regulations. Final license is subject to inspection and audit to ascertain that the facilities are compliant with all applicable state and local codes, bylaws, ordinances, and regulations. The applicant shall cooperate with and provide information to commission investigators, agents, employees, upon request and finally that the provisional license is subject to the payment of the appropriate license fee pursuant to regulation. This recommendation is based on the applicant's demonstrated compliance with the laws and regulations of the Commonwealth, suitability for licensure and upon the evaluation of the thoroughness of the applicant's responses to the required criteria. Commission staff certify that a due diligence review of the application has been performed and as of this date, the applicant has demonstrated compliance with the laws and regulations of the Commonwealth and its suitability for licensure and accordingly, the applicant is therefore recommended for a provisional license with the previously stated conditions. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments to the executive director? Can I have a motion please to approve the uh, staff recommendation to approve a uh, license for alternative therapy, a provisional license for alternative therapy groups, uh, MRN 281346 for recounting? Second please. I'd like to mark Joe Commissioner McBride made the motion to approve, seconded by Commissioner Doyle. All in favor? Aye. Let's mark Joe the Commission unanimously accepts the staff recommendation uh, on this license. Thank you very much. The next license is again for alternative therapies group MPN 281300 for product manufacturing. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, again, this is alternative therapies group. The proposed address is 10 industri Industrial Way in Amesbury. Uh, this is the same location as the cultivation previously considered cultivation license. Um, again, they have three pending applications, three additional applications pending before the commission. The executives proposed are the same as before, Christopher Edwards, Julio Fuentes, George Christie, and Derek Brock. And there are no entities with, uh, that appear to have direct or indirect control uh, over the marijuana establishment that differ from those presented. Uh, they have secured their RMD priority status and remain in compliance with EPH. This will be a co-located uh, business with their uh, medical operation in Amesbury, and they have obtained their final certificate of registration. The Hills Community Agreement was executed on April 3rd. Community outreach meeting uh, and certification has been provided. Community outreach meeting was held on April 19th. Notice was published in the Newport, Newbury Board Daily News, uh, and notice was sent to the municipality as well as the Butters. And finally, uh, they appeared that they certified that they were in compliance with the meeting requirements. No objections were raised with the commission. We received a response from the municipality on July 11th stating that they are in compliance with all local zoning, uh, all local ordinances and bylaws. Their plan to positively impact areas of disproportionate impact uh, is the same as previously stated. They conduct career fairs in Haverhill and Lynn to schedule and conduct formal interviews with individuals from those areas, offering job skills, uh, job skill assessments, and providing guidance for interested parties to receive training relevant to the establishment's positions, continuing to make charitable donations to local nonprofit organizations and conducting food drives to benefit uh, local food pantries. There were no concerns that were arisen during the background check on individuals or entities, and no disclosures of any past civil or criminal actions, uh, no disclosures of any occupational license issues, and no disclosure of any business interests in other jurisdictions. They've secured their certificate of standing with the Secretary of the Commonwealth as well as the Department of Revenue. Uh, as far as their operations review, uh, management operations review, they, the proposed timeline to become operational uh, is that they can be operational immediately upon being granted a final license through an existing r and and have all needed human capital expend expenditures to begin operations. Uh, they've already made those expenditures. A special permit to operate the facility was granted on June 25th, and no additional construction is required at this site. They currently uh, use a point of sale system program to virtually separate sales of medical and adult use products. Their proposed hours are Monday through Sunday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. They submitted the required uh, summaries of plans, policies, and procedures, including a security plan, prevention and diversion plan, storage of marijuana plan, transportation plan, inventory procedures, quality control, and testing procedures, 
personnel procedures, dispensing procedures, record keeping procedures, maintenance of financial records policy and diversity plan. They're fully compliant with submitting those summaries and they've been, those summaries have been deemed to be substantially compliant with our regulations. Full compliance we reviewed during our inspection and do require uh, before a final license is issued. Their summary of the diversity plan is the same uh, as previously stated in diverse workforce, inclusive work environment, support for domestic violence victims, and statistics and reassessments. Again, there's no cultivation plan, it's just a product manufacturing uh, license. Therefore, uh, the following products um, tend to be produced or sold. Uh, one ounce tinctures, dark chocolates, milk chocolates, white chocolates, capsules, uh, topical salve, distillates, cartridges, oils, and peeps. Uh, again, because it's product manufacturing, there's no plan for obtaining marijuana or marijuana products if it's not retail. The commission staff recommends issuing a provisional license with the following conditions. Final license is subject to the required individual successfully completing a fingerprint-based check of state and national, health, uh, history, national criminal history databases. Final license is subject to certification that the applicant remains in compliance with DPA's regulations. Final license is subject to inspection and audit to ascertain compliance with the requirements listed in our regulations. Final license subject to inspection or audit uh, to ascertain that facilities are compliant with all applicable state and local codes, bylaws, ordinances, and regulations. The applicant shall cooperate with and provide information to commissions, investigators, agents, and employees upon request. And finally, finally that the provisional license is subject to the payment of the appropriate license fee pursuant to regulation. This recommendation is based on the applicant's demonstrated compliance with the laws and regulations of the Commonwealth suitability for licensure and upon the evaluation of the thoroughness of the applicant's responses to the required criteria. Commission staff certify that a due diligence review of the application has been performed and as of this date the applicant has demonstrated compliance with the laws and regulations of the Commonwealth and its suitability for licensure. Therefore the applicant is recommended for a provisional license with the previously indicated conditions. Thank you. Are, are there any questions or comments? Yeah, I just have a question. I just have a question of clarification, not on a specific license, but just in general. Um, when uh, we're talking about manufacturer, you say the plan for obtaining marijuana or marijuana products is not applicable. Isn't there a requirement to obtain marijuana if you only have a manufacturer license? So I'm just I'm curious about that. Uh, again, it's not specific to this application of going over. It's in, in that uh, context, though, I guess perhaps it's how we present it as far as the executive summary. Um, I try to break out if it's a specific license type. So uh, their cultivation plan, their product manufacturing plan, or where they intend to obtain final product. I understand, I understand that, but would, would we want and shouldn't we want to know if you're an intermediate like manufacturer where you're obtaining your raw material? So of course we do, absolutely. Um, that would be something that is, so this is really a summary of the overall application. Uh, if that information was not presented to the commission, and I, I guess I'm going to speak very broadly to any uh, is, is, is broad question. Right. We would want to know that information right. and certainly um, intend to follow up based on that information uh, when we visit for an inspection of where they intend to secure. So for instance, in a manufacturing context, uh, if they intend to produce extracts, where they intend on getting um, flour right, from in order to, to do that. So uh, the, re the way it's presented here is if it's a cultivation license. No, I, I understand exactly what you're saying. I, I guess I, I'm asking if it would be and then, you know, everything's in the license, and we all obviously look at the license application, not just your review. Um, but um, in terms of the way you present the review, it strikes me that if, if at all stages, where do you get the input for that stage would be valuable information. And that is something that we do secure. Okay, great. Okay. Um, unless there are any questions, can I have a uh, recommendation or a motion, please, to approve the staff recommendation to issue a provisional license to alternative therapy groups, MPN 281300, for product manufacturing? Okay. Have a second, please? Second. Uh, let the Chair Commissioner Flanagan make a motion to approve, seconded by Commissioner Doyle. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Let the Chair of the Commission and ask me approve the staff recommendation. Thank you. Uh, the next four uh, that we're going to process are for a New England treatment access. The first is MCM 281267 for Tier 6 cultivation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as you indicated, the entity is New England treatment access. The proposed address is 5 Forge Parkway in Franklin. The license type uh, before you for considerations of Tier 6 cultivation, which is an indoor operation of 40,001 to 50,000 square feet. This applicant has also applied for four additional licenses from the Commission, uh, product manufacturing, two retail, and then finally a research license. Uh, the list of required individuals and in the business roles is before you. Uh, I'm going to endeavor not to read each of them each and every time. Uh, 
is a sizable list, but of course this summary will be available on our website. Uh, we also don't want to capture anyone's name. Uh, next, there are a number of entities uh, associated with the establishment that have um, some either direct or indirect control. They include CBPB Holdings, uh, Reed Management Services, Eddy Out LLC, Double Creek Enterprises LLC, HCK Enterprises, Aegis USA, uh, and Aegis MA LLC. Uh, all those entities have been uh, checked as, as a part of our background check as well. This applicant is an RMG priority applicant, and they are in compliance with the Department of Public Health uh, regulations, and they intend to be co-located uh, in medical adult use establishments in Franklin. They have obtained their final certificate of registration at this location for cultivation and processing. Uh, their host community agreement was executed on April 13th, and certification has been provided. The community outreach meeting was held on March 27th. Uh, notice was published in the Mail for Daily News at least seven days prior, and they certified that notice was sent to the municipalities and the butters, and certified that they were compliance uh, with the meeting requirements. There were no objections uh, communicated to the commission. The commission received the response from the municipality on July 11th, stating that the applicant is in compliance with all local uh, ordinances and bylaws. Their plan to positively impact areas of disproportionate impact uh, includes partnering with Roxbury Community College, parts of Roxbury following within disproportionate areas of Boston, uh, to develop a four credit and paid internship program for students to receive training in marijuana business management. The goal of the program is to assist in the, the cost of a college education while providing students with the skills to enter the industry. Uh, and for non-students, the applicant plans to utilize Roxbury Community College as a recruitment resource in an effort to reach qualified community members uh, for employment opportunities. There were no concerns that were raised during the background check on individuals or entities. And there were no disclosures um, that are presented suitability issues for past or civil criminal uh, actions. No disclosures of any occupational license issues. Uh, I'm sorry, there were disclosures for them, none of them uh, presented suitability issues. And finally, uh, there are several uh, interests in other jurisdictions, including uh, the entities that I've indicated, Aegis, Reed, HFK, uh, have an interest in the Delaware Limited Liability Company, but there have been no issues from this disclosure. They uh, obtained their certificate of good standing from the Secretary of the Commonwealth as well as the Department of Revenue. Their proposed timeline to become operational uh, is within two weeks from being issued a provisional license. The applicant will seek approval from DPS to transfer any excess product from their medical operations to their adult use operation. Closed hours of operation on Monday through Sunday, 6 a.m. to 11.30 p.m. And they submitted the following summaries uh, for plans, policies, and procedures, a security plan, prevention and conversion plan, storage of marijuana plan, transportation plan, inventory procedures, quality control and testing procedures, personnel procedures, dispensing procedures, record keeping procedures, maintenance of financial records policy, and diversity plan. They were fully compliant with submitting all the summaries and all the summaries that can be uh, to be substantially compliant with our regulations compliance will be reviewed during our inspections and will be required before a final license is issued. The diversity plan includes the following uh, goals and objectives, which is implementing diversity programs that will include maintaining an open dialogue regarding inclusion, training events designed to bring awareness about diversity and setting goals and tracking progress on diversity initiatives, recruiting a diverse workforce, conducting career fairs and training for individuals, including those in areas of disproportionate impact. Their summary of their cultivation plan uh, is the following. The cultivation plan uh, and methods used in the following stages, clone and vegetative stage, uh, flowering stage, quality control, handling and sanitary procedures and environmental services. Um, again, this is a cultivation license, so there's no products to be produced and no plan to obtain marijuana or marijuana products. The commission staff recommend issuing the provisional license with the following conditions. Final license is subject to the required individual successfully completing a fingerprint-based check of state and national criminal history databases. Final license is subject to certification that the applicant remains in compliance with DPH regulations. Final license is subject to inspection and audit to ascertain compliance with requirements listed in our regulations. Final license is subject to inspection and audit to ascertain that its facilities are compliant with all applicable state and local codes, bylaws, ordinances, and regulations. The applicant shall cooperate with and provide information to commission investigators, agents, and employees upon request. And finally, that the provisional license is subject to the payment of the appropriate license fee pursuant to regulations. This recommendation is based on the applicant's demonstrated compliance with the laws and regulations of the Commonwealth and suitability for licensure, and upon the evaluation of the thoroughness of the applicant's responses to the required criteria. We certify that the due diligence review of the application has been performed, that as of this date, 
the applicant has demonstrated compliance with the laws and regulations of the Commonwealth and its suitability for licensure. And accordingly, we therefore recommend a provisional license with previously mentioned conditions. Any comments or questions? Commissioner Tom. Um, with regard to the disclosures that were made, how was it determined that they did not present suitability issues? The, um, in the context of any disclosures that are made, uh, it's first evaluated against any of the exclusion provisions in the Commission's regulations. Uh, so if there were a civil disclosure, for instance, that would not rise to the level of being a, uh, a criminal act that would render either a uh, presumptive negative or a mandatory negative. Uh, and we know it, we confirm it through our background check, uh, but it's not identified as being a suitability related uh, incident or Accept the staff recommendation to approve a uh, provisional license for New England treatment access MCM 281 267 tier 6 cultivation. Can I have a second, please? Second. Uh, let the record. Uh, let the record show Commissioner Doyle made the motion to approve, seconded by Commissioner Title. All in favor? Aye. Let the record show the Commission unanimously approved uh, the staff recommendation on MCM 281 267. Thank you. Uh, next, again, New England Treatment Access, MRN 281240, retailer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is a retail license uh, proposed for New England Treatment Access. The address is uh, 118 Cons Street in Northampton. Uh, again, it's a retail application. The uh, New England Treatment Access has four other applications pending before the commission. Uh, cultivation, retail, research, and product manufacturing. The individuals listed on this application are the same as previously. Uh, the same with the entities uh, with the various control over uh, indirect or direct over the entity. They are an RMD priority applicant and they are in compliance with DPH. Uh, they will intend to be co-located with their uh, medical business in Northampton, the RMD in Northampton, and they've obtained their final certificate of registration at this location for dispensing. The host community agreement was executed on March 29th. The certification has been provided. The community outreach meeting was held on March 21st. Uh, notice was published at least seven days prior in the Bailey Hampshire Gazette. The applicant certified that notice has been, was sent to the, the municipality as well as any of others, and that they certified their compliance with the various meeting requirements. No objections were raised uh, relative to the application. We did receive a response from the municipality on July 11th, stating that the applicant is in compliance with all local ordinances and bylaws. Summary of their plan to positively impact their use of disproportionate impact. Um, it was the same as previously indicated that the applicant plans to partner with Roxbury Community College to develop a four credit and paid internship program for students to receive training in marijuana business management. For non students, the applicant uh, plans to utilize Roxbury Community College as a recruitment resource in an effort to reach qualified community members for employment opportunities. There were no concerns that were raised during the background check on individuals associated with the application, and no concerns raised uh, regarding entities associated with. As far as any past civil or criminal actions, the work disclosures, however, none uh, presented suitability questions relative to, um, again, past civil or occupational license issues. Um, there were disclosed other business interests in other jurisdictions, uh, as indicated previously for Aegis, Marie, to HFK, uh, have interest in Delaware Limited Liability Company. There were no issues uh, that were raised during this disclosure in the course of this disclosure. A secured certificate of good standing from the Secretary of the Commonwealth as well as the Department of Revenue. The proposed timeline to become operational. Uh, in two weeks from being issued a provisional license, they will seek approval from DPH to transfer any excess product from the medical operation to the adult use operation. The proposed hours of operation are Monday through Sunday, 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. They submitted the summaries of following plans, policies, and procedures a security plan, prevention of conversion plan, and storage of marijuana plan, and transportation plan inventory procedures, quality control and testing procedures, personnel procedures, dispensing procedures, record keeping procedures, maintenance of financial records policy and diversity plan. They were compliant with submitting all the summaries and those summaries have been deemed to be substantially com uh, compliant with our regulations. Full compliance will be reviewed during our inspection process and will be required before a final license is issued. The diversity plan was the same as previously indicated. Implementing diversity programs that will include maintaining open dialogue regarding inclusion, training events designed to bring awareness about diversity, and setting goals and tracking progress on diversity initiatives, 
recruiting a diverse workforce, and conducting career fairs and trainings for individuals, including those in areas of disproportionate impact. Uh, this is a, a retail license, so there's no cultivation plan, no uh, production plan, uh, to address the last question, Mr. Chairman. Um, that said, because it's a retail license, they uh, have established uh, cultivation and processing are the operations. The applicant's long-term plan is to be self-sufficient um, cultivation through retail operation. Their initial goal is for its marijuana supply uh, is to apply and receive DPH approval to transfer excess medical marijuana supply to the their adult use operation. Uh, the commission staff recommends issuing a provisional license with the following conditions. The final license is subject to the required individual successfully completing a fingerprint-based uh, check of state and national criminal history databases. The final license is subject to certification that the applicant remains in compliance with DPH regulations. The final license is subject to inspection and audit. Uh, to ascertain compliance with the requirements listed in our regulations, final license is subject to the inspection and audit to ascertain its facilities are compliant with all applicable state and local codes, bylaws, ordinances, and regulations. The applicant shall cooperate with and provide information to commission investigators, agents, and employees upon request. And finally, that the provisional license is subject to the payment of appropriate license fee pursuant to our regulations. This recommendation is based on the applicant's demonstrated compliance with the laws and regulations of the Commonwealth. Suitability for licensure and upon the evaluation of the thoroughness of the applicant's responses to the required criteria. We certify that the due diligence review of the application has been performed, and as of this date, the applicant has demonstrated compliance with the laws and regulations of the Commonwealth and its suitability for licensure. Accordingly, we therefore recommend a provisional license with the following for the previously mentioned conditions. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Commissioner Bauer? This is MRN 281 Yes. They're located in Northampton. And their positive impact plan is to partner with Roxbury Community College. That's correct. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Go ahead, Commissioner. Uh, I don't think this requires a vote, but um, given that so many applications are coming in before the positive impact guidance was issued, um, can we uh, agree as a policy that upon renewal, um, all of these applicants will follow up on their plans? It's certainly something we can build into our renewal process, absolutely. And similarly uh, related, not specific to this application, but related, is that if we were to reopen an application and request additional information, say for instance related to the positive impact plan, we would circulate that guidance to that applicant as guidance for them. So in other words, receiving more information Here's guidance that the commission has put forward. Any other questions or comments? I think I have a motion to approve the staff recommendation to uh, issue a provisional license to doing the treatment access MRN 281240 retailer. Okay. I have a second, please. Second. Uh, uh, let the director of Commissioner Doyle make the motion to approve, seconded by Commissioner McBride. All in favor? Let's work to the commission as they approve the staff recommendation. Uh, the next one is New England Treatment Access, MRN 281287, retailer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as you indicated, this is a retail license uh, proposed for New England Treatment Access. The location of the establishment is 160 Washington Street, Brookline. Uh, again, this applicant has submitted four additional applications to the commission, cultivation, retail, research, and product manufacturing. Individuals identified the same as previously uh, referenced, as the same with the entities in their role as either indirect or direct, uh, with either indirect or direct control. They have secured their R&D priority status, and they're in compliance with DPH. This uh, is a proposed co-location facility uh, in the town of Brookline. They have secured their final student registration at this location for dispensing. The host community agreement was executed on April 24th, and certification has been provided. The community outreach meeting was held on April 12th with notice uh, published at least seven days prior in the Brookline tab. The applicant certified that notice was sent to the municipalities and abutters and uh, they further certified that they compliance with the commission's meeting requirements. There were no objections communicated to the commission. A response was received from the municipality on July 18th stating that the applicant is in compliance with all local ordinances and bylaws. Their plan to positively impact areas of disproportionate impact uh, is the same, which is to uh, 
uh, partner with Roxbury Community College to develop a four credit and paid internship program for students to receive training in marijuana business management. Uh, for non-students, the applicant plans to utilize Roxbury Community College as a recruitment resource in an effort to reach qualified community members for employment opportunities. There are no concerns raised during the background check on individuals or entities. There were disclosures uh, for the applicants past the civil or criminal actions, as well as for uh, occupational license issues. Those disclosures presented uh, no suitability issues. Similarly, there were disclosures of business interests in other jurisdictions, uh, from Aegis, Reed, HFK, as they have uh, interest in a Delaware limited liability company. Uh, no issues arise from this disclosure. They've secured their stupid good standing from the Secretary of the Commonwealth as well as the Department of Revenue. As far as the management operations review, uh, their timeline to become operational uh, is within two weeks of being issued a provisional license. The applicant will seek approval from EPAs to transfer excess product from medical operation to their adult use operation. The proposed hours of operation are Monday to Saturday, 10 a.m. to 6.45 p.m. and Sunday, 12 p.m. to 4.45 p.m. They submitted summaries of the following plans, policies, and procedures. Security plan, prevention of diversion plan, storage of marijuana plan, transportation plan, inventory procedures, quality control and testing procedures, personnel procedures, dispensing procedures, record keeping procedures, maintenance of financial records policy, and diversity plan. The applicant is fully compliant with submitting these summaries, and those summaries have been deemed to be suitable, uh, I'm sorry, substantially compliant with the requirements listed in our regulations. Full compliance will be reviewed during inspections and will be required before a final license is issued. Diversity plan is the same as uh, previously indicated, which is to implement diversity programs that will include maintaining an open dialogue regarding inclusion, training events designed, designed to bring awareness about diversity, and setting goals and tracking progress on diversity initiatives, recruiting a diverse workforce, and conducting career fairs and trainings for individuals, including those in areas of disproportionate impact. This is a retail uh, license, so there's no cultivation plan or products to be manufactured. Uh, as far as their plan for obtaining marijuana or marijuana products, the applicant has established uh, cultivation and processing R&D operations. Their long-term plan is to be a self-sufficient cultivation through retail operation. Their goals uh, for its marijuana supply to be uh, to apply and receive DPH approval for transfer of any excess medical marijuana supply to the adult use operation. Uh, commission staff recommends issuing a provisional license with the following conditions. Final license is subject to the required individual successfully completing a fingerprint-based check of the state and national criminal history databases. Final license is subject to certification that the applicant remains in compliance with DPH regulations. Final license is subject to an inspection and audit to ascertain compliance with the requirements listed in our regulations. Final license is subject to inspection and audit to ascertain that the facilities are compliant with all applicable state and local codes, bylaws, ordinances, and regulations. The applicant shall cooperate with and provide information to commission investigators, agents, and employees upon request. And finally, that the provisional license subject to the payment is subject to the payment of appropriate license fee pursuant to our regulations. This recommendation is based on the applicant's demonstrated compliance with the laws and regulations of the Commonwealth and suitability for licensure upon the evaluation of the thoroughness of the applicant's responses to the required criteria. Commission staff certify that the due diligence review of the application has been performed, and as of this date, the applicant has demonstrated compliance with the laws and regulations of the Commonwealth and its suitability for licensure. Accordingly, we therefore recommend a provisional license with the previously mentioned conditions. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments from the commission? And, uh, may I ask for a motion, please, to uh, approve the staff uh, recommendation to approve a uh, provisional license to New England Treatment Access MRN 281287 for retailing? Can I have a second, please? I'll let the record show Commissioner McBride make a motion to approve, seconded by Commissioner Doyle. All in favor? Aye. Let the record show the Commission now so approve the uh, staff recommendation on MRN 281287. Thank you. Uh, the last one for review today and consideration is uh, New England Treatment Access MPN 281306, product manufacturer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As you've indicated, this is a product manufacturing license uh, for New England Treatment Access located at 5 Ford Parkway in Franklin. This applicant is also uh, applied for four additional licenses and commission, cultivation, two retail, and one research. The owners or managers or individuals type of business are the same. Similarly, um, any entities with direct or indirect control are also the same. They are a priority applicant, uh, has an existing R&D. That R&D is in compliance with, with, with DPH. They intend to be co-located with their uh, R&D in Franklin. The R&D is obtaining a final certificate of registration at this location for cultivation and processing. 
The host community agreement was executed on April 13th and certification was provided. Uh, the community outreach meeting was held on March 27th with notice published at least seven days prior in the Milford Daily News. The applicant has certified the notice was sent to both the municipalities as well as any abutters, and they've also certified that the meeting was held in compliance with our requirements. There were no objections communicated to the commission. We received a response from the municipality on July 11th stating that the applicant is in compliance with all local ordinances and bylaws. Their plan to impact, uh, the positive impact areas of this unfortunate impact uh, is the same as previously indicated with plans to partner with Roxbury Community College to develop a four credit and paid internship for students to receive training in marijuana business management. For non-students, the applicant plans to utilize Roxbury Community College as a recruitment resource in an effort to reach qualified community members for employment opportunities. There's no concerns raised during the background check on individuals or entities associated with the application. There were disclosures relative to past civil or criminal actions that were occupational license issues, however, those disclosures did not present suitability issues. Similarly, there were disclosures of business interests in other jurisdictions for ages for the HFK as they are uh, have interest in the Delaware limited